Statistics tell us that one out of two will develop arthritis in their knee or hip by age 85. Two out of three who are obese will develop osteoarthritis in their knees during their lifetime. An estimated 52.5 million adults in the United States reported being told by their doctor that they have some form of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, gout, lupus, or fibromyalgia. In 2006, 7.5 million people went to see their doctor for rotator cuff problems. Hi, I'm Dr. John Filippini, and I don't mean to depress you with all these statistics. I just want you to know that you're not alone. And obviously, if you're watching this video, you or someone you care about is suffering from some type of knee or shoulder problem. And I want to congratulate you for being proactive and looking for answers rather than just following the quick and easy approach, which is usually taking medications like ibuprofen, um, Celebrex, naproxen, or even cortisone injections. Perhaps you've even been given that scary prognosis telling you that you have bone on bone and the only way to fix this is with surgery or even complete joint replacement. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is hope, but I also want you to understand that there are many different underlying causes that present with knee or shoulder pain. And the way you've responded to your doctor or your therapist's treatments are actually clues to what those causes are. Starting with the basics, your joints are made up of muscles, bones, ligaments, tendons, menisci or cartilage, and joint capsules. If any of these are torn or inflamed, you'll have painful range of motion, which is relieved by rest and anti-inflammatories that your doctor may have prescribed. If giving the joints some rest, as well as being on those anti-inflammatory medications, didn't help, either the injuries are very deep or there's another cause of the pain. Even degenerative arthritis will calm down with rest and anti-inflammatories, but when you become active again, the problem or pain resurfaces. And with degenerative arthritis, you'll likely have some history of trauma, even though it may have been decades ago. If you experience knee or shoulder pain following extensive activity, you know, such as hiking or playing sports, you may be suffering from bursitis. Now, bursitis is the inflammation of a bursa. Bursa are fluid-filled sacs in the joints that act as cushions or lubrication between muscles and bones. You should notice significant swelling or a bogginess over the painful part of the shoulder or knee if this is the case. But honestly, I hear this diagnosis being way overused by a lot of doctors because it's a simple way to get you to um, give the joint some rest and then take your anti-inflammatories. If you're not overly active or haven't been involved in some activity that you're not used to doing, this isn't likely the cause. If on the uh, other hand, you uh, do something that requires you to be on your knees all the time, that will inflame the bursa of the knees. And the only way you're going to resolve the problem is to stay off your knees. If you suffered with knee or shoulder problems for many years, you may have developed bone spurs. And I'll talk a little about that in a bit and show you how we resolve them and without surgery. One last thing about the mechanical aspect of these joints, and that's the bones. You always have to rule out bone tumors or cancer, particularly if your knee or shoulder pain is becoming increasingly worse and it has a tendency to hurt more at nighttime when you're laying down. The reason the pain increases at night is because your blood pools to these areas when you lay down, which causes increased swelling in the bone, putting more pressure on the pain receptors, and thus causing more pain. So please don't t jump to this as a diagnosis, as a conclusion or fear, because these are the rare causes of joint pain. A simple x-ray or MRI will rule out um, you know, all of the different problems that I've touched on so far, and I'll talk about how we treat each of these scenarios in just a bit, and all without drugs or surgery. Let's kill two birds with one stone and talk about partially how we address bone spurs as well as decrease the risks for cancer. This comes from maintaining the proper pH in your blood. We have a very narrow range that our pH has to stay at, you know, in our blood, and if it gets too high or too low, we die. So most of us don't have problems with our pH being too high. This comes from ha having too much minerals or alkalinity in our body. If that's the case, our bodies quickly shed it off and you know, excrete it out through our urine, their sweat, and their feces. Unfortunately, with our standard American diet, all the sodas that we drink, the medications we take, the alcohol, and the abundance of toxins that we're exposed to, most of us are in a state of hyperacidity. When this happens, our bodies, through homeostasis, keep things balanced or stabilized, you know, things like our pH. Now, if our blood is too acidic, which is you know, low in minerals, our body pulls what it needs, plus a little more, from our bones and from our teeth. 
Now, once it realizes it pulled out a little too much, it dumps it back into the system. Now, at nighttime while we sleep, it can't get rid of it through our you know, urination, so it has to lay these excess minerals down around areas of stress or inflammation, like your knees and your shoulders. This causes spurs to form. In our office, we'll show you how to check for your pH and exactly what you need to t um, take to normalize your pH and your minerals, and then replace the minerals that you've been pulling from your bones and teeth all the years of your life. And once you alkalize your blood, your risk for cancer drops substantially because cancer cells can't survive in an alkaline environment. But that's why 40% of Americans develop cancer in their lifetime. The toxins and alcohol, our acidic diets, the low mineral intake, just to name a few. Another cause for joint pain is rheumatoid arthritis. Now this can be seen on x-rays and MRIs as the disease pro um, progresses, but you'll usually have pain in other joints as well, you know, such as your hands. An easy way to rule this out is to have your doctor run an RH factor on your blood work. If this antibody is present, then you're likely dealing with rheumatoid arthritis. But rheumatoid arthritis is just the diagnosis. It's not the cause of your joint pain. What I've found with most of my rheumatoid arthritis patients is that once we clean up their gut and their diet and balance out their immune system, removing the triggers which cause this autoimmune disease, the symptoms calm down and become quite manageable. The reason that this is usually tied into the gut is that normally our intestines are lined with small brush-like borders that keep our undigested food and our ingested microbes inside our gut while our stomach acid and our, our enzymes destroy, break down, and digest all these things. So the safe microscopic particles of the amino acids, the glucose, and the fatty acids can then slip in between these little microvilli and gain access into our blood. Then these nutrients are carried to the rest of our tissues, providing the necessary nutrition that our cells need. The problem that most Americans have is that they damage this gut lining through the use of anti-inflammatories, um, steroids, antibiotics, things like gluten, um, GMO foods, alcohol, um, H. pylori, and other bacteria, just to name a few. And once this lining is damaged, undigested foods, parasites, bacteria, and other microbes can then gain access directly into our blood, which is then circulated through our body. When our immune system sees this, it goes into attack mode and begins to attack anything that looks like the enemy. As this battle rages on, it can take out innocent bystanders, like your cartilage. This is what triggers the autoimmune disease rheumatoid arthritis. Or it can attack other um, tissues as well, such as your nerves, your brain, your thyroid, your pancreas. In fact, if you have one autoimmune disease, you have a 50 to 60% chance of developing another one. This is why so many of the testimonials you might watch or read about on our website claims that their joints started feeling better once we put them on a detox and a gut repair program. This is why I encourage you to bring any of your lab work with you, you know, that you've had done over the past year or so if you come in to see me. I can sometimes tell depending on what your doctor has run if you're suffering from a stomach or a digestive or even an autoimmune disorder. Now let's get into some of the other common but what you might consider to be some off-the-wall causes of joint pain. These fall under the category of toxins, bacteria, viruses, and heavy metals. Normally your liver acts like a detoxifier clearing out the many toxins that we're exposed to on a daily basis. But our society is now exposed to over 60,000 different toxins that we weren't exposed to just 40 years ago. In fact, the research shows that the average adult has more than 700 toxins in their blood, many of which are carcinogenic. When your liver can't clear these toxins out of your system, your body has to store them in areas that will cause the least amount of overall and life-threatening damage. And this can be in your joints, your fat, or your nervous system, anywhere it can dump these toxins. And the same thing happens with microbes, bacteria, viruses, and parasites, and even heavy metals, especially if you already have an injury or inflammation in a joint. Microbes are drawn to inflammation because that means there's less circulation there and therefore less exposure to your immune system that might try to destroy those microbes. The only way your medical doctor can catch this is to do a synovial fluid biopsy with a needle and then test it for various agents. If they find anything, the medical course is to drain the fluid, then treat the patient with antibiotics. 
As common as we find this to be the problem in our own office, you would at least think the medical profession was checking for this quite a bit more often. But depending on how you feel about antibiotics, there are much safer and effective ways of treating these kinds of conditions. So how do we find out if our patients are suffering with parasitic infections, heavy metals such as mercury, lead, nickel, etc., or bacteria or microbes? Well, of course, we can run the appropriate lab work, checking for white blood cells and the state of the immune system. We can also run um, blood, hair, saliva, or urine tests, checking for things like heavy metals and bacteria. But even if these come back positive, they don't tell us if these levels are stressing the tissues and which tissues those might be. So we use a specialized technique called bioresonance testing. This is an incredibly safe and effective way of stressing the different tissues in the body to see if first they're actually under any type of stress and then second by what type of organism. This is done with energy frequency testing because every living cell and tissue has their own unique frequency of oscillation. Your adrenal cells resonate at a specific frequency that's different from neural tissues, muscle, bone, or any other tissues. If we detect a frequency such as bacteria, heavy metals, or even cancer cells, we know what we have to go after to get the you know, tissue to heal and then recover. We can do this in a couple of ways. One is through the use of remedies, which we make with special equipment. This remedy is fired into a small vial of water, then the patient you know, t just takes a drop on their tongue, which is immediately dispersed throughout their body, which then directs the cells with similar resonant frequencies to copy the, that same frequency and dump the toxins, regenerate, or, or do whatever it takes to mimic that same healthy frequency. I guess the easiest way to understand this is to you know, think of it like a vaccine. The body cells have a rebound effect that it's um, exposed to it and then, and then it fights off the infectious agent, restoring the cells to their normal, healthy, resonating frequency. We can also detect and kill off living microbes with Rife technology. This is some incredible equipment that very much like the bioresonance testing, detects the organism such as Lyme's disease. Now I use Lyme as an example because this is a very common bacterial infection that causes joint pain. There are about two to 300,000 new cases of this bacteria being diagnosed every year. What we used to suspect was being transmitted by a tick, we now suspect that there may be other modes of transmission such as mosquitoes because there's not that many people that are getting bit by ticks every year. But back to my Rife story. With a Rife machine, we can get a computer readout on the frequencies being hit, and Lyme's disease has about 100 cobacteria that are carried with this infection. But once we know that we have the organism present, we can then fire the energy frequency on a photon energy beam into the patient, which then kills off the bacteria or the virus or cancer cells or whatever we're going after. This can sometimes kill the cells off so fast that it can cause a, what we call a Herx reaction overwhelming the body's lymphatic and circulatory system so it can't get rid of the die-off fast enough. When this happens, the patient might feel sick, fatigued, or experience you know, flu-like symptoms. So rather than letting our patients suffer with this die-off effect, we use the Rife machine attached to a foot bath which pulls the dead cells out through the feet. And as you can see on the slide here, it fills the bath with some nasty looking and really nasty smelling dead gunk that's being pulled out right through their, um, their feet and through their body. <clears throat> this helps our patients to feel much better as well as confirms you know, what we're doing is actually working. I don't want to get too much into the energy testing and treatments that we provide in our office because if you're not used to this type of treatment and rely more on our westernized medical treatments to you know, all of your ailments, this might sound a bit out there in right field. And I just want you to know that there are alternative approaches to your health aches and pains that our medical system just doesn't use. And by turning a deaf ear to it, they lose a lot of the benefits that these therapies can, you know, that can be offering to the patients. But let's talk about some of the therapies that might be easier to understand because it complies with all the science we know and use with applied physics and science. Sometimes a patient is so inflamed and in pain that no modality we have will help until we resolve some of the swelling. Now this can be done with cold compression. Fortunately, this doesn't have to be performed on many patients, but ice is a quick and easy way to reduce swelling and decrease your pain. In fact, you may find that icing your knee or your shoulder at home will buy you some temporary relief. A very helpful tool that we use for joint healing is cold laser therapy. Cold laser therapy has several beneficial effects. 
It speeds tissue repair and hastens the growth of new cells. It softens scar tissue, which helps to remove or improve the range of motion. It relieves pain and resets the chronic pain cycle by affecting the large diameter of ferret nerves. It reduces swelling, improves blood flow and nerve function. We also provide prolosonic therapy for patients who need it. Now this is done with the use of a topical gel that soothes and heals neurons and it's driven deep into the tissues with high frequency sound waves. We provide this equipment for our patients that want it with a $325 deposit so then they can apply and use this at home as much as needed while they're under our care. Yeah, now you probably already heard me mention the large diameter of ferret nerves. These are the nerves that carry pain messages to your brain. Your brain is receiving trillions of pieces of input every second, which has to be regulated and, and cancel out the unnecessary incoming input, because if it didn't, the brain would go into overload, which does happen in some cases, resulting in kinds of pain and movement disorders. The large diameter ferron nerves are what help control this, and we have several modalities that take advantage of this mechanism to use it to our advantage. The first is done by resetting the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract. Your cerebellum is the lower part of your brain that acts as a processing station for the upper cerebrum. These large diameter nerves fire into this system and after you have an injury to an extremity such as a knee, shoulder, hip, um, elbow, or even the spine itself, the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract shuts this pathway down, causing the larger muscle groups then to tighten up or spasm like a self-protective mechanism. Once this injury subsides, the cerebellum is supposed to reactivate this pathway. Unfortunately, all too often, it never happens. So the pathway <clears throat> remains inhibited, which causes altered mechanical movement of the joint, you know, chronic pain syndromes, and even scoliosis if this occurs in the spine. Now, when you come in for an examination, we'll be testing this pathway to make sure that it's intact. And if it's not, we'll be using techniques to fire this system back up and rehabilitate this neuromuscular pathway. Another piece of equipment that we use to awaken and strengthen the large diameter of ferret nerves is peripheral nerve stimulating a device. We use this for knees, shoulders, joints, even peripheral neuropathy, which is a numbness, burning, or tingling that you feel in your feet or your hands. Now, a lot of times when this neural pathway is involved, you'll have loss of or increased sensitivity in uh, the nerves of your feet and your hands, along with the knee, the hip, uh, shoulder, uh, pain that goes uh, you know, with any of those. But I'll be testing this for you uh, um, when you come in for your examination as well. Now, this is another, another device that many of our patients choose to purchase for home use as it offers such incredible relief and healing of the nerves. One of the most powerful nerve regeneration and pain control devices available today is out of Germany, however, and it's called the Hackomed. And this causes both bioelectrical, which is the stimulation of the electrical firing down the myelin sheaths of the nerves, and biochemical firing, which is the firing of the chemical gradient of the nerves. Now, you may recall a bit about that sodium-potassium influx of the cell walls of the nerves as they transmit their electrical signals from you know, back in high school biology. This is only a, a, piece of the, the, a piece of equipment that I'm aware of that actually causes both of these aspects of the nerve gradients to fire. In neurology, we understand that a nerve needs two things to thrive, fuel and activation. Fuel comes in the form of glucose and oxygen. That's why I like to check my patient's metabolism by running some blood work or taking a look at what their own medical doctor has already run to make sure their glucose is being regulated properly. You know, they're not hypoglycemic or insulin resistant because both of these are pre-diabetic. I also like to check the status of their red blood cells to make sure that they're not anemic. Many of the patients I see in my office are struggling in both of these areas, but their medical doctor hasn't addressed them because they weren't bad enough yet. My question is always, how bad does it have to get before you address it? <laughs> Become a diabetic or an anemic, you know, have your leg amputated? Either of these might not be enough to cause knee or shoulder pain in of its own, but it can sure be a contributor. So yes, I like to take a look at the fuel delivery to your cells, and I also like to make sure the activation part is firing properly as well, which is what I do on your examination. Sometimes you can have referred pain to your shoulder or knee from a bad disc in your neck or your back. When we find this to be the case, if chiropractic adjusting isn't enough, we use spinal decompression. 
This retracts the disc protrusion from the nerve. It reduces the inflammation around the nerve and restores the normal neurological flow. You don't always have to have neck or back pain to have nerve interference to your shoulder or knee either. It just depends on what fibers of the exiting nerves um, from the spine is being effective. And I would be remiss if I didn't at least adjust the knee or the shoulder. I can't tell you how many patients I've had come crawling in, especially with knee pain, who practically danced out of my office after one single adjustment. I use a specific technique for sh uh, shoulder and knees that restores the normal mechanics of the joint and resets the Golgi tendon organs, which are the stretch receptors built into the tendons. When these organs are under constant stress because of improper joint mechanics, they stay in spasm, causing chronic pain. But folks, the main point I want you to understand is this. There are many different causes for chronic joint pain. My office specializes in getting to the underlying cause of what's causing your joint pain. I hope you can understand after watching this video that it's not as simple as just giving you a pill or giving you that magical adjustment. It's all going to depend on what the cause of your symptoms are. In order to figure out what kind of an approach we need to take with, your, uh, with you requires that I do an examination on you. And I'll do a neurological examination, you know, taking a look at the brain, the cerebellum, and the peripheral nerves, along with a metabolic exam, taking a look at your digestion, your adrenal function, mineral absorption, and other things. If you take the time to fill out your paperwork completely, including the metabolic assessment form, this will help me to better understand your case so we don't waste our time uh, chasing down the wrong rabbit when the right rabbit might be just sitting on our lap. Now, once I've gone over your history and did your examination, I can give you my recommendations on where to go from there. Now, I'm sorry I can't give you even a, a ballpark uh, figure at this point of what it's going to cost because there can be quite a huge gap on a simple knee misalignment versus you know, something like a Lyme's infection or rheumatoid arthritis. But at least to help you take the first step, the fee that I normally charge, which is $295 for this consultation, examination, and report of findings, I'm only going to charge you $95. This is my thank you for taking the time to watch this video so that I could pre-educate you about your health and symptoms. If you haven't taken the time to watch this, I'd have to cover all this during our first meeting, explaining why I would be you know, making my recommendations for which tests or what kind of treatments I'd, I'd be recommending. But I'd also like to address a few questions that most people typically ask. The first one is this one. Will my insurance pay for this? Well, it's not that we don't accept insurance. It's just that insurance doesn't pay for wellness care. They pay for sick care. They'll pay for x-rays, MRIs, even lab work if it's within the scope of things that they want to cover. They can justify doing an x-ray of your knee because it makes sense, but not always the back, even though a disc problem could be referring pain to the knee. And why would they want to pay for lab work looking at your digestion or you know, check for things like Lyme's disease? That requires a lot of out-of-the-box thinking as well as out-of-the-box treatments. Now, if you do have good insurance, we'll be happy to give you the paperwork so you can bill your own insurance. But in order for us to keep our costs down, we don't bill out to Medicare and all the other insurance companies just to have them fight and deny our claims because what we do in our office is outside the realm of chiropractic care. As a doctor of pastoral medicine, I can treat my patients with any of the postgraduate training I've received in functional medicine, functional neurology, and the energy sciences. It's just that insurance companies won't cover these services. And by the way, to be seen by me in my office, you need to become a member of the Pastoral Medical Association. And this is a members only service. It doesn't cost anything to join. It just merely makes it clear that we're taking a different approach to your health you know, than what our traditional healthcare system uses. But that's your choice. If our healthcare system was working for you, I doubt if you'd be watching this video. But since it's not, I want you to be aware that you'll most likely uh, be the one to pay for these services. But anything we can order through your insurance, such as lab work, you know, x-rays, etc., we'll be happy to do that for you. Another question that's always asked is, what do your services run? As I mentioned before, this is all going to depend on what the underlying cause is. We do have programs that roll all the, fee, the fees into you know, one bundle, which saves our patients quite a bit of money. It also allows us to finance your care if you choose to pay that way. And I know that almost no one wants to have another payment to make, but if you can't afford to you know, pay for this up front, this can make this possible and affordable for you. It all comes down to how important it is you know, and how much do you want it. You didn't need a new car but you wanted it bad enough to finance it. 
You didn't need that new house with the extra space or the yard area, but you wanted it enough to finance it. If you want to be able to walk or play with your grandkids, golf, or do the other things that make life so enjoyable, you might find this opportunity to finance something that will give your life back to you a real blessing. And finally, the question I hear a lot is, can you help everyone? Well, obviously, I nor any doctor can make that promise. What I can promise is that I'm going to do my best to find out why you're hurting. And if you follow my recommendations, you should get the same great results we've had with so many patients through the years you know, that I've been practicing. So if you're ready to get started, you can call our office at 209-823-1163 or just click on below this video. Thanks for watching and may God bless you with abundant health and life.